The author, Rachel Carson, she really nailed it in her book, Silent Spring, which was published in 1962. She pointed out that soon spring would be bereft of bird song and dawn choruses because the birds were being poisoned by organochloride biocides. Now, biocides is a big word for chemicals that kill, and these particular ones contain chlorine, an element which can be really bad for living things. These were being applied as weed killers and insecticides, but because they didn't break down, they moved up through the levels of the food chain, from the plants or insects to which they were applied, through the animals that ate those plants and insects, and becoming really concentrated in very high levels in the birds and the other top predators that ate those animals. Her book was so influential that it resulted in a complete ban on the insecticide DDT and in the setting up in the United States of the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Biocides no longer contain chlorine, the reason why those 1960 poisons never broke down, but a whole new suite of poisons based on phosphates, organophosphates, they came into being. Now, these did break down and they were not concentrated at the higher levels of the food chain. And our Irish population of peregrine falcons, which were down to about 60 pairs at that stage in the late 1960s, they recovered, as did another raptor, the buzzards, which actually spread back into Ireland from Scotland, and they occur over farmland in every county in Ireland now. They came back by themselves, they weren't reintroduced. Once we stopped using these terrible poisons, they were able to come back and breed here. But the problem hasn't gone away, you know. A main cause of decreasing biodiversity is the very simple fact that we have fewer wildlife than ever now because we are killing them in greater numbers still with herbicides insecticides, fungicides, malocides, which target snails and slugs, rodenticides, fibronol, which is applied to soil, neonicotinoids, biocides of all sorts. A recent report that was published in the journal Biological Conservation tells us that 40% of insects worldwide are categorized as declining, with a third of those being described as endangered. Now, this is because of biocide use, among other reasons. The rate of extinction of insects at 2.5% per year is actually eight times faster than that of vertebrates, those animals with backbones. You can do the vanishing sums yourself. Mosquitoes may no longer be a problem in 50 years, or indeed wasps, or midges, or butterflies, or bees, or people. Now, Ireland is a highly agricultural country. Our main crop here is grass. 55% of Ireland is covered with it to feed our 6.7 million cattle and our 5 million sheep. Now, that's, of course, highly productive. Single species grassland. These are not pastures full of lovely wild flowers. Copious amounts of nitrogen and weed killers ensure this. The amount of life-killing poisons, biocides, that are used in the Irish environment increases year on year. It would really frighten you. In 2013, we used 2,913 tonnes. In 2014, it had gone up to 3,015 tonnes. 3,121 tonnes in 2015, and the year the last year that we have figures for, 2016, 3,135 tonnes of poisons being used. And there's no reason to believe that the numbers have decreased since 2016. Now, these kill target and non-target species alike. They are exceedingly effective. And as a result, there are very few insects for bats, swallows, swifts, frogs to feed on. The total number of insects are in fact way down. I mean, after all, when was the last time you had to wipe dead insects off your windscreen? A job for which it was worthwhile actually selling special sprays in the 1970s. There'd be no sale for those kinds of sprays now. 
They are not all organophosphates that break down after killing huge quantities of their intended targets either. There are other sorts of poisons, such as rat poisons, rodenticides, which are now second generation anticoagulant products. And these are anticoagulant second generation, so-called, because the rats and the mice got immune to the first generation ones, which were things like warfarin. And now 85%, 85% of our barn owls are known to have rodenticides in them, according to a recent Birdwatch Ireland report, not to speak of buzzards, red kites, kestrels, and even bird-eating species such as sparrowhawks and peregrines, and their food chains are contaminated by snails and slugs feeding on the rodenticides that are left out as permanent bait. Neonicotinoids are absorbed by the whole growing plant. It's a spray that they put on the whole growing plant. It's absorbed by the leaves. It's absorbed by all of the plant. So it's not just the leaf sucking aphids for whom it is intended. It's not just them that cop it. It's actually the pollinators that feed on the nectar, the honeybees that feed on the pollen, and the ladybirds that feed on the aphids. Fibronol is a poison that sterilizes the soil, killing all insect life there. Now, while it has been banned in the EU since 2017, it hasn't been banned elsewhere. So we can conserve our habitats. We can fight climate change. We can have pollinator plants and wildflower meadows. But as long as we pump more than three and a half thousand tons of poisons into our environment every year, with the express aim of killing wildlife, how do we think we are going to increase biodiversity? At the rate we're going, it won't be only spring that'll be silent. <laughs>